So exercise uh, related to topic momentum. First 20 questions we have already discussed. So we'll start with question 21. In question 21, um, in a bowling game, a player rolls a small ball along the ground. The diagram shows the action of the player as he starts to swing his arm uh, forward at A to a point when the ball is rolling along the ground at C. The player exerts a force on the ball between A and B. State how the motion of a ball at C differ from uh, that of B. So, how the two are different from each other? What is the difference in terms of the uh, forces? The, the first thing, look, you, these points, the force is exerted on the ball. And whenever there is a force, a resultant force, the, what will happen? The ball will accelerate. So, A and B, both cases, it is accelerating. But at C, what will happen? The ball is being released. So, the, now the force is a frictional force, which oppose the motion. Direction of the motion is towards right and the friction is opposing the motion. So, what will happen? It will decelerate or it will have a negative acceleration. So, between like at B, there is a resultant force. Same as the direction of the motion, it is accelerating. But in C, What will happen initially, the, if there is no uh, friction force, then it will continue to move with a constant speed. But because there will be a friction force, so the ball will slow down. So at B, it will accelerate. And C, it will decelerate. And the reason you can refer, like the force is same as the direction of the motion. And at C, the force is opposite to the direction of the motion, like force is opposing the motion. The player applies a forward force of 0.2, uh, for 0.2 seconds and the ball leaves the player hand at a speed of 3 meter per second. Calculate the average force exerted by the player applies to the ball the mass of a ball, M1, is 1.5 kg. So, the formula which relate the momentum, uh, the rate of change in momentum and force, that mo force is rate of change in momentum, MV minus MU over T. Initially, like we consider the ball was initially at press. The mass of a ball is 1.5 kg. The ball leaved at a speed of 3 minus... The mass of a ball is 1.5, but initially it was in the player hand. Initially, that moment it was at rest initially. And then it took 0.2 seconds to change the momentum. So that will be 22.5 Newtons. Now, the ball rolls along the ground until collide with a stationary ball of mass 1.2 kg. After the collision, the both balls roll off at an angle to the original direction as shown in the diagram. After collision, the 1.5 kg ball travel at 0.7 <coughs> meter per second at an angle of 45 and 1.2 kg ball travel at an angle of 20 uh, degrees with a speed of 1.8. Show that the velocity V of the first ball as it collides with the second ball is about 2. So we have to use a conservation of momentum <clears throat> in x direction because it's a momentum in two dimensions. 
So we can take edge direction. So momentum before, the sum of the momentum before must be equal to sum of momentum after. <clears throat> so 1.5 is a mass, the speed is V. It collide with a stationary, so 1.2 into zero. Then they will have the two components. This will be because uh, M1, V1, this will be M1, V1 cosine 45, and this will be M2, V2 cosine 20. So M1 is 1.5, V1 is 0 0.7, and cosine 45, because we are taking an X direction, plus M2 is 1.2, and V2 is 1.8 and then cosine 20. So this whole one, this will be zero. This is 1.5. So whole factor 1.5 into 0.7 cosine 45 plus 1.2 into 1.8 cosine 25 divided by 1.5. This will give us the speed at which the M1, the first ball, hit the second one, which is 1.8 meter per second. So about the, that we have to say that it is uh, about 2. So 1.8 is there, which is about 2. By mean of a suitable calculation, show that the collision is inelastic. How we show inelastic collision? Look, because energy is a scalar quantity, so when you're working out the energies, you don't have to bother about the angles. So the total energy before the collision, and we work out the total energy after the collision. The total energy before the collision, 1.5, because it's half mv square, 1.5, 1, half m is 1.5, and v is 1.8, and then square. And this one is half, 1.2, and the v, v is the 0 square. After collision, it will be half, 1.5, and 0 0.7. square. We don't have to bother about the angles as energy is a scalar quantity. So at any angle, if they are moving, we will not consider when we are working out the conservation of uh, energy. The, the angles are not important. 1.8 square. So when we work out the energy before, this is coming out 2.4 joules. When we work out the energy after, this is coming out to 2.3 joules. So it shows that the two energies are not same. So it means the collision is inelastic. If it was an elastic collision, then the energy before must be equal to energy after. In question 22, a student attempts to measure the speed of air leave the hair dryer by measuring the force exerted by the air on the electric balance. The diagram shows the path of an object of mass m uh, colliding with the surface at a speed v. The collision takes time t. Explain why the force exerted on the surface by a single collision is given by mv sine theta. So we have to take the components. Like if this is a velocity v and making angle, so there will be the component, there will be component of the v, the one which is with an angle. This will be v cosine theta and opposite to the angle will be v sine theta. Same thing, this is also V, but it will also have the components. 
This will be V cosine theta and this will be V sine theta. Because the two have the opposite direction so, and velocity is a vector quantity. So if one of them you are taking positive, the other one you should take as negative. So we have the formula for the force, which is a change in momentum mv minus mu over t. So f is equals to m. What about v? v is minus v. Uh, so the final, this is a final one. And this is the initial one. So the final velocity is v sine theta minus m and the initial velocity is minus v sine theta divided by t. mv sine theta plus mv sine theta divided by t. mv sine theta plus mv sine theta is 2 mv sine theta divided by t. So it means the force is equals to 2 mv sine theta over t. Is it uh, clear this one? How we show that the force is 2 mv sine theta over t? The student varies the angle at which he holds a hairdryer, a graph for the FB acting on the electronic balance against the sine theta is plotted. The average mass of the air strike the electronic balance per unit time is given by VA into rho, where A is the area of the nozzle, rho is the density. Assume that the air behaves as, a, as in part A, show that in this case, the gradient of a graph will be equal to 2v square a rho. So we have this equation to, we already worked out the equation like it f is equal to 2 mv sine theta over d. Now what we are doing, we are plotting a graph between f We are plotting on x-axis, it's a sine theta, this part. On y-axis, so what will be our gradient? Our gradient is actually equals to, uh, I will write as G, the gradient, otherwise it, M, both have M. So our gradient is equals to 2 MV over T. Because what is left? And what is V over T? As you can see, uh, uh, the average mass Per unit time means mass over time. What is this value? This value is V A rho, as I mentioned, like M over T is actually equals to V A and rho. So this G is equals to 2 V A rho into V. So the gradient will be equal to 2 V square A rho. That's we have shown that the gradient is equal to 2 V square A and rho. Because the mass per unit length, a mass per unit time was given by V A rho, according to the question. <clears throat> Calculate the speed of the air. The air, <coughs> if we need the speed, So we worked out that the gradient is equals to 2 v square 2 v square a rho. If we need v, so gradient divided by 2 a rho in a root. That will be v. Rho is given, the density is given 1.2. The area is also given, which is uh, 2 exponent minus 3 meters square. Now the gradient, how to work out the gradient? That's why the graph is given to you. So you, what you have to do, you have to draw a line of a best fit. 
there is no y intercept so your line should start from origin line of a best fit mean the number of the points above and below uh, on average should be same and when the points are more spread out like some points are below and some points are above it means this graph is having a random error if the points were shifted all the points are shifted either higher side or a lower side then there will be a systematic error but because the points are evenly spread out shows there is a random error in this so you have to work out the gradient take any two points first point on x axis will be x1 first point on y axis will be y1 the second point on x axis will be x2 and another point will be y2 so use a gradient y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 you'll get the gradient and then use that gradient to work out the value for v such so as why the speed calculated in part b might be incorrect so what might be a reason so if you see this we are using an hair dryer so hair dryer is blowing the air out so that's how the air will move out from the air. so all the particles are not hitting in the same at the same angle so what might happen the source of inaccuracy in this that when the air is coming out from this hair dryer all the particles may not hit at the same angle which we calculated here that is one mistake another thing maybe not all the particle will hit the balance that is also another source of inaccuracy and when the air is being blown the temperature of the air will change as it is moving out so the density of air will also change so the number of the particles which are present in a unit volume will also change so these are the factors which will leads to the inaccuracy is it uh, clear this one So th these are the questions, question 21 and 22 from Momentum.